Hey everyone, so I am doing a tag video today. I'm going to do the 13 personal questions tag, which is kind of an old tag, um, but I don't know. I feel like the questions are pretty interesting, so I figured that I would do that today for my vlog channel. I decided to do these kind of videos on my vlog channel just because they're really not beauty related or style related, so um, I don't know. I just figured it kind of fit better on my vlog channel. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get started because there's 13 questions and knowing me, I'm going to turn 13 questions into a 27 minute video because I'm just impossible to shut up. So, uh, I have all of the questions on my phone, which, let's see, awesome. Okay, let's go. So the first question is, what do you order at Starbucks? Before I answer this question, ding, 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 random fact, I used to work for Starbucks. So I actually don't like Starbucks. Um, not, I don't know. I feel like they don't have the best coffee, as in just the coffee, not including like lattes and drinks like that. I don't think it's the best out there. I prefer other places. But I will go to Starbucks out of convenience because there's one on every corner in Chicago. So, um, plus I also got really tired of drinking all of their drinks all the time because when you work there, you kind of just like make yourself a drink every like hour that you're working. So, um, I actually don't really like it that much, but I do order, when I go, I will order, um, the Americano over ice. I don't like it hot. Um, I just, I don't know, I just don't like the way that there's taste when they're hot. I usually will order an Americano wherever I go anyways, regardless, but I prefer theirs iced. Um, when I worked there, I used to drink about three of those a day. It was absolutely out of control. Um, sometimes I'll just get one of their dark roast coffees. It depends on what kind they have that day. And then, um, if I want, like, a latte type of drink then I actually get a mocha with hazelnut in it because it kind of tastes like Nutella. It's really, really good. And um, if I eat something, I always get the pumpkin bread because it's absolutely amazing and I absolutely love it. So that's what I will order at Starbucks. Uh, one thing in your closet you can't live without. Um, <laughs> the color black. I don't. Does that count? I don't even know. Um, I try to kind of mix it up in videos where... I won't just wear black because I feel like it just kind of washes the whole video out but being perfectly honest guys on a day-to-day -day basis that's the only color that I wear I don't know if you can tell with my clothing rack but predominantly it's all black everything in my drawer is all black um, sometimes I will I'll wear gray you know like when I'm feeling daring but um, I guess that would be like what I couldn't do without also, maybe like, sorry, there's a um, car outside that's honking. Um, also, maybe like, I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with that. I don't know if that counts, but that's just what I'm going to go with because that's honestly what I couldn't do without. So, um, the next one is what's one thing most people probably wouldn't know about you for this one I'm gonna say that obviously anyone that's watching this knows that I make YouTube videos as a hobby but people that don't aren't like who don't know that I do that obviously won't know about it but people I don't tell people that I do it as a hobby um, the only person that really knows is my boyfriend and my family and a few of my friends so I feel like most people that I meet randomly day to day that's something that they don't know about me but I felt like that was kind of cheating so something that anyone who is subscribed to me won't know is that my real name is actually not Mackenzie and before everyone like freaks out um, Mackenzie is my name legally it's just my middle name my real name or my first name that I have never gone by in my whole entire life is Lauren um, so that is something I guess that most people wouldn't know. Question number four, one thing that you want to do before you die. 
Okay, so I actually have a few because um, I cheated and I couldn't just think of which one would be like the ultimate that I wanted to do before I die. So the first one, I would say I want to go swimming with sharks. I have been swimming with like baby sharks and sharks that can't really harm you, but I would actually, if it was at all possible, I would actually really like to do some type of like caged, um, like, I don't know, a, like being in a shark cage um, around like much more dangerous sharks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, but I would like to swim with actual sharks. It's just something that I've always thought is really cool and um, I don't know, I think it's kind of like a adrenaline thing. It's just something that I think I would be like really excited but really nervous at the same time. Um, so there's that. Number two, I really want to own a pet snake at some point. I don't have any pets right now, but I eventually would really like to have a dog and a snake. Um, maybe not at the same time. Maybe that's a bad idea, but I would eventually really like to own a pet snake. I don't know what kind, but um, yeah, that's one thing that I want to do. I also really want to move to New York at some point. Um, I don't know if it will be like once I finish school, which who knows when that will happen right now. Um, but eventually at some point in my life I want to move to New York. I also would really like to go to Paris. Um, I feel like every 20 something year old girl wants to do that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like that's on every 20 year old girl's bucket list. Um, and just kind of like I think I want to travel in general and just go to a lot of different places. So those are my answers for what I would like to do before I die. Um, what's one food you can't live without? Coffee, if that counts, coffee. Um, number six, what quote or phrase do you live by? I don't really like this question. I don't know. I feel like it's just kind of lame. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I don't really live my life according to words that were spoken by another person. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but I think the one thing that I really wish I lived by, I guess, I don't know, something that I find really motivating um, is the quote, yesterday you said tomorrow, which is something that I try really hard to remember because I'm the king of procrastination and I will put everything off until the last minute so I feel like that's something that's important for me to remember but the act of actually remembering it never happens so I guess that's what I would live by if I lived by something I don't know number seven what do you like or dislike about the YouTube community um well, I think the first thing would be that I feel like certain people, like the people that do YouTube, it's like kind of a release for them, at least for me personally. I feel like a lot of YouTubers say this, but I am going to just reiterate it. Um, I'm a terribly shy person, and I'm a terribly private person, and I'm very like introverted and just... I am kind of strange in like social situations, um, not like I'm like a freak or anything like that, but like social situations kind of make me uncomfortable, like meeting new people and things like that. And I feel like doing videos on YouTube kind of contradicts that because people just assume that you must be outgoing and extroverted and you must just love talking to people because you're literally talking to whoever decides to click on your video. but. For me, that's not necessarily true. This is easier than being put in a situation full of like 50 new people that I don't know anyone and I just suddenly feel really anxious because I don't, I'm just, I don't feel comfortable like breaking out of my comfort zone. So I feel like this actually helps me be like more extroverted in situations like that because if I'm comfortable sitting in my room by myself talking to my camera with people I'm sure that can see me outside of my window or anything like that and I'm comfortable with putting that video that I film on the internet, I just feel like it 
makes me feel more comfortable around people that I have never met before or anything like that. So I feel like that's one of the things that I really like about doing YouTube because I feel like I interact with a lot of other people who do YouTube that are the same way and I feel like we have common interests and it's a really great way to like meet people that you do share common interests with. Um, so yeah, and I feel like, I don't know, like talking to people who are subscribed to me, talking to you guys, like it's enjoyable for me. Like that's what I love about YouTube is that like I feel like I interact with people that like I have things in common with whereas on like a day-to-day -day basis that's not always the case. So that would be what I like about YouTube and what I dislike about YouTube is that obviously I think everyone's answer for this is always the same. Sometimes YouTube can be very negative because at the end of the day you are filming yourself and your thoughts or your opinions about anything no matter what you do YouTube for. You're putting that on the internet for people to see and for people to make their own judgments about and I know that some people think it's really weird to do YouTube and I think that some people think it's really weird just to film videos alone like in your bedroom sometimes and like that's why I don't tell a lot of people that I do YouTube but um, I just feel like sometimes people will just make their own judgments about you or whatever you're making a video about just based off of that one 10 minute video so I feel like there can be a lot of room for negativity but I don't know I feel like the positivity kind of outweighs the negative aspect of it for me just because it's something that I really like doing so that's uh, that I guess my heat also just kicked on so I'm sure that you guys can hear it because I heard it in one of my other videos I filmed um, it's like a really loud whirring noise and I don't really know if there's anything I can do to edit it down number eight what's your most listened to song on iTunes so I actually just got a new laptop and I haven't set up iTunes and I don't know how to transfer my music from my old laptop to this one because this one is a Mac and my old laptop is a PC and I there's something about like the file type or something. I don't understand anything about that kind of shenanigans. If you know how to do it, let me know, that'd be great, but I have no idea so I'm just going to leave it be right now. And my old laptop is just a piece of junk that doesn't even turn on right now so I can't actually check what my number one song is. But if I was going to guess, I would say it's definitely, for sure, either Fleetwood Mac or Elliot Smith. Now the song, I, I would say if it was Fleetwood Mac, it would probably be Dreams, but it could be anything. Like, it could honestly be anything by either of those two artists because they're my absolute favorite musical artist of all time. So um, I know for sure that it's definitely one of those. Um, what kind of style would you define yourself as having? The style where you only <laughs> wear one color? I don't know. I feel like, if I were to think about it, I would say if Low Bosworth, both of the Olsen twins, and Alexa Chung had a baby that only wore black and gray and maybe sometimes white, then that maybe tan too if you know we're feeling crazy but I feel like that would be the only way that I could describe it because I don't know adjectives to describe style I don't know I don't I don't know personally for myself I can't describe how I dress because I feel like that's one of those weird things where like I don't know you just can't describe it to anyone else so that's the best way that I could think of describing it is like those three four people, if you're counting both of the Olsen twins, um, are what I would say are like my biggest inspiration. So yeah, my phone keeps locking. I should have taken the lock off for this video because it's getting really annoying. And yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Number 10, favorite number. I don't have one, so you can pick one for me. Number 11, two hobbies. Um, the first one I would say is cooking. I'm really into cooking. Um, I actually considered going to culinary school. So um, yeah, I just that's something that I just love to do in general, like an everyday thing. 
Um, I really like watching cooking shows or shows about like culinary art. I really like reading books about it and I feel like that's kind of a fact that people don't really know is that I'm actually a really really good cook. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I am. So um, yeah, I would say that would definitely be one of them. Um, a second one. Organizing? Is that a hobby? I don't even know, but I am obsessed with like always making sure everything has a place and coming up with like new ideas to organize things like I will organize anything literally one day at work I organized our entire backstock with like a label maker and like by size and color and like by all of these different like um categories just because I could so I guess that's kind of a hobby but I don't think that really counts so I guess I would say I'm really into like dreams um like dream analyzing so i read a lot about dream analysis kind of like the process of dreaming um like why people dream certain things or why certain people will dream certain ways i'm really interested in just like the study of that and um i really like if like someone else will tell me their dream i really like trying to like analyze it myself based on like what i've read so i guess like dream analysis would be a hobby not to make myself sound like a new age hippie freak or anything um but i guess that would be a hobby that i have number 12 two pet peeves all right this is where i really have to bite the bullet and just keep it down to two because i have probably a list the size of texas of all of my pet peeves and if I get started on them I'm going to ramble and I'm going to rant I'm gonna go off on this tangent just about all the things that peeve me in everyday life so I've picked probably my two biggest I'm going to try and not rant because I don't want this whole video to be me ranting about my pet peeves um, so the first one is <sighs> passive aggressiveness in the way that like I'm the kind of person that I feel like if you have an issue, you say something and you say everything you have to say or you say nothing at all. I think it's very black and white. You either choose one or the other. You don't go in between where you're like making comments about it or like beating around the bush. That's what I define the passive, passive aggressiveness that I'm talking about. There's probably nothing that I hate more than that or nothing that peeves me more than that it's just when people like won't either say something or say nothing don't just like make hints or like you know say things without saying them I mean who has time for that ain't nobody got time for that so I would say that would probably be my biggest pet peeve I'm trying really hard not to rant about it right now because it's just it's really irritating to think about and um, my next one my second one would probably be, um, I don't, I don't know if this is a, as big of a pet peeve if you don't live in a city, but when I'm on the subway and I'm on my phone or like even on the bus and I'm on my phone and you're in close quarters with people, people will look at your phone and like look at what you're doing and like read what you're doing and they're... <laughs> it irritates me to no end i want to pull my hair out right now that when i'm like on the l and i'm checking an email or sending a text message no matter how private it could be or anything there's always someone that's like what are you what are you doing and just like peering over your shoulder and like i understand when you're packed in that tightly with people that sometimes their eyes will wonder but i've like been in so many situations where there's actually been a person like reading whatever it is that i'm doing and like looking at what i'm doing on my phone so much so that when I had a Blackberry, I had a privacy screen protector on it so that you couldn't see it from different angles. And I don't think you can get one for iPhones. If you can, let me know where to buy it because I nothing irritates me more about living in the city than the people on the train that look at your phone when you're on your Facebook or you're sending a text message or email, whatever it is that you're doing. Those people just... I can't, I can't even, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rant. So we're going to stop and we're going to move on to question number 13, uh, guilty pleasures. So I have 
the only person who really knows these is Sam. So it's kind of weird to be putting this on the internet that I secretly really love these things. Uh, the first is Coldplay. <laughs> the second is Kesha. And the third is the TV show Pretty Little Liars. Um, Coldplay is probably my biggest guilty pleasure. It's really, it's whiny and sappy and just, I don't even know. It's, I don't know why I love it so much, but secretly I really love Coldplay. And anytime I'm like in a car or I hear a Coldplay song, I'm secretly like, turn it up. And then like kind of singing along. If I'm by myself, I'm obviously like belting it out to the heavens, but if I'm with one, I'm kind of like trying to hide the fact that I know every word, but in my head, I'm like, something like that. Um, Kesha, it's just so catchy. It's just so catchy, and that's it. And it's like, it's such a mess, like, just all the time, and I love it. And um, my boyfriend's mom actually met Kesha, and she said that she's nothing like who she is in real person and she was just so surprised to see her like out of character I guess and um I I just I prefer I prefer messy Kesha I prefer like hot mess all the time wailing freaking out Kesha um <laughs> I just I don't know her music's really catchy so I don't know I don't I've never told anyone that except for my boyfriend and his mother <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm sharing that with you guys. And then Pretty Little Liars. It's a horrible acting. The storylines are not, like, anything spectacular. Some of the lines are so cheesy. It's, the plot is cheesy. But you can't not, it's like a car accident. You can't look away because it's just so good and it's always, like, suspenseful and, like, I don't know, there's always just so much like drama and excitement and I don't know, it's relatable even though obviously no one ever relates to <laughs> sleeping with their English teacher and I don't know, being harassed by a stranger or I don't, they're, I don't know, anything that happens on that show is not exactly anything that I've ever related to at some point in my life, but I don't know, it's really good, it's, it's really good. So yeah i don't know i i watch it regularly i every time there's a new episode i'll go to abc family and i'll watch it because i don't actually have cable so yeah but i'm going to my parents um actually i should already be at my parents while this video when this video gets uploaded because i'm having surgery for my wisdom teeth and they have cable and i'm totally watching the new episode and i will be tweeting about it incessantly because i'm one of those people that tweets all of the spoilers to pretty little liars so if you don't want to see those, I probably wouldn't look at my Twitter on Tuesday nights. Um, just a helpful reminder. So that is all for the tag questions. If you want to do this, I will list all of the questions down below and feel free to video response to this. Um, again, my regular channel, blog, Twitter, Instagram, all of that will be down below as usual so uh yeah i'm going to go and goodbye